cool so now we have some time so what i want to do is the following so let's try to do some exercise right so let me show a circuit so let's say this is v in yo uh, okay So let us say you come across a circuit, right? The question is, how do you go about understanding what the circuit is doing, or get a good appreciation of the circuit? Right? That's something you will encounter in practice. As a designer, you will come up with some, come across some new circuit. I just want to show you how uh, you could go about actually, you know, understanding, right? So typically, I suggest to do it in uh, four steps. First is try to understand what the circuit is trying to do in the first place right don't go about solving it directly ignore all non idealities and understand uh, what was the basic functionality of the circuit right so let's assume all r nots to be infinity gms are large and then try to see what's doing so here again let's ignore r nots of all and the input voltage is applied here let us say gm of this is also very large so what can you say about output yeah output will be equal to vn right gm is infinity let us say gm vgs is you know z i mean should be finite if gm is infinity vgs should be zero so v out will be equal to vn so now at least you know what the circuit is trying to do so first i would say you intuit what the circuit is doing right then uh, second thing is once you know this think of uh, some other circuit that can do a similar job do you know some other circuit source follower so let's also put that here so v in v out right so now we already know a circuit that does this so what should be the natural question you should ask ah huh? sorry exactly right if you already know if you already have a simple circuit why do you even make this right so try to understand how this is better than this i mean there is there are always pros and cons right you see what are the pros this bro has hmm? so yeah yeah let's do that and again for understanding that you uh, actually have to do full blown analysis right but this analysis is not a blind analysis because you already expect what should be the output right i mean if you directly go and solve it you will get something you have no idea if it's correct or not now at least you can do some sanity checks and see if things are okay right so let's calculate it uh, let me erase it so again this is a linear time invariant circuit and as we saw for any lta network you can find the output as short circuit gm times r out right so let's try to find short circuit gm first so for small signals i'll open the current source so that i can make some space here for short circuit gm i'll short the output Okay. let's assume all you know uh, gms are not all equal let's not complicate it so if i apply v in here uh, what can you say about the current flowing in this direction what is the current there zero it's gate i mean this current has no path to flow zero right and if you see here i have applied an input here source is grounded so this is now like a common source structure so what do you think will be this voltage vg minus gm r not times v fine and uh, this is the same voltage applied here so what will be the current incremental current ha huh? yeah it's basically uh, gm times yeah gm r not into v in now we already know there is no current flowing in this direction because that is open so what is the total current flowing into the short circuit now a minus side i mean remember there is no current flowing here right because there is no path for this current okay so which means the total short circuit current is minus i2 so what is the short circuit gm can you tell me directly it's basically i'll write it as gm times gm or not maybe i should have numbered the transistors but it's okay 
yeah fine now let's do the same thing for your normal source follower so again short the output what is the short circuit gm here it's just gm right i mean this is grounded gm being flows here set so let's uh, this is short circuit gm let's also find uh, output resistance so for output resistance there uh, is all this input is grounded let us say apply test voltage vt right so actually let me draw the r not of this transistor here so again once again you see uh, what is the current flowing here now i mean uh, in that uh, you have gm vgs portion of the current right what is that current in the direction it's gmvt so they call it i1 i1 is gmvt and yeah this current has no path to flow it cannot flow here where where will it flow it will only circulate within r not so what is voltage across r not i mean remember huh yeah i1 r not is the voltage across this and if i call this as vg what is the voltage across r not vg minus vt okay so if you solve it uh, vg will be i think 1 plus gm r not vt right because i1 is gm vt and then one more vt adds so you get this so this is basically vg so what is the small signal current this is the total i test because there is no current flowing here fine so total uh, test current is gm times what is r out approximately yeah one by gm square or not so we'll have to make some space so i'll write it like this gm times gm out okay so here you can let's do the same thing for your simplistic source follower so if i short this apply a test voltage what is the impedance yeah approximately 1 by gm right i mean we have ignored r not of i mean here also we'll have an r not of this transistor i have ignored it for simplicity okay so now you tell me what is gm times r out approximately 1 here also so there seems to be no nothing i mean nothing major seems to have changed with respect to the voltage gain so what has changed r out has become better or worse i mean so source whatever you want to have a small output resistance earlier you had 1 by gm so looks like this is giving a better r out so that is definitely one advantage you can see right now correct the load resistor here can be smaller that's what it means right now remember source polar you model it like this the voltage gain is approximately 1 so the output comes here you have the output resistance here and your load so right so if you have a smaller output resistance then you can connect a smaller load resistor also so again uh, if you are an ordinary engineer you will stop there but if you want to be better i would ask you to go to a third step wherein you try to see how you can derive the circuit from scratch right so at least now you know what is the circuit buying you compared to the source follower circuit the goal is i mean one of the uh, advantage here seems to be the fact that the output resistance is smaller right so let us see how you might uh, come to this circuit from here right so if you do try to do that let's see see here i have a normal source follower again i'm finding the output resistance so this is short this is short you apply a test voltage here and as you know the current flowing incremental current is what gmvt this this seems to be the only incremental current but let us say i want to reduce the output resistance remember my output resistance is vt by it so if i apply a particular test voltage what should i uh, what should happen to the test current that should increase 
now you seem to have only one portion which is gmbt right so if you want to have a larger uh, uh, current let us say you want this current to be uh, say this color let us say in addition to gmbt i want to have some gm or not right some gain times the current okay an additional current which is the existing current plus this right so uh, which means there should be a path for this additional current to flow from here how many directions that can uh, can that happen i mean the question is let me rephrase it if it's not clear i have vt to reduce the output resistance i should have an additional current flowing so which means from here how many directions this additional current can be added yeah i mean here but from there i mean can go up or down i mean either up or down or both right so let's stick to down so let us say you want to have an additional current flowing here okay. now remember that uh, this should be a current source now so what is a current source uh, i mean how can i replace the current source with now mos transistor i mean what i'm saying is for incremental picture if you have this additional current source you are said this current source will be a nmos so what should be the gate for this nmos okay so it somehow arranges we are said so the question is i only have this guy now at the source i have applied a test voltage vt is there a provision uh, where, from which i can get a gain times vt Yeah, remember that. I mean, if you have a single transistor, I apply an input at the source. I want to get an amplified version of the signal. Where can I tap it from? Drain. Remember, that's a common gate structure. I apply an input at the source, tap it from the drain, so I should no longer have the drain to be short, right? Because it seems to be like this is the only transistor to which I have applied some EVT, right? I mean, remember, a transistor responds only if you apply something to gate or source. for this transistor you have not applied it to the gate or source only to the drain so it is only this transistor which can give you something so which means you have to tap it from drain so this will be gm r not vt so what do you do now and of course to bias it you put a current source at the top so so again this is way this is one way in which you can derive it right and not needed right why no remember this you want you want this to provide gm bt so this should be incremental okay see i mean it turns out the other advantage the circuit has is this see if you take let me move to right see right now we have looked at the small signal picture let us also compare this and the source follower with respect to large signal picture right so let me draw the source follower here this is your ideal source follower i not and remember you will connect some load resistor that is going to take some current i load now what is the total current flowing in the transistor this i not plus i load right and remember if i have a resistor here this load current is going to be v out by rl right now if your rl is large which means a uh, load current is going to be small the current in the transistor is approximately constant but if you want to have a smaller load resistor then the load current is going to be large so which means the actual bias current in the transistor is no longer constant it changes with the input i mean output follows the input so your uh, transistor's bias current also changes with the input which means gm changes with the input so what will that result in it will result in non linearity right now no longer we have gm you can say it's gm of v in any any time you have something like this it's non linear right so let us say you want to avoid this right let us say you want to avoid this you want to keep the uh, bias current of this transistor constant right and actually other thing is here uh, this is happening because from this circuit we need two things to happen 
one is to make sure this voltage is buffered here second is provide a current to the load now both of the jobs is being done by this guy that's why bias current is changing let us say i want to have a case where the bias current uh, is constant right so here i have uh, bias a transistor with a current source at the source that is why when i connect a load here the current here changes so where can i put the bias current now i have the same transistor see earlier i put the bias current here to bias this guy with a constant current but since i am tapping the output from the source some current is being drawn from there so the current here is not constant so instead of putting the current source at the source i can put it at the drain so this will ensure that the current flowing through the transistor is constant now but that doesn't end the picture because now you see that i have a load i should have some provision to provide the load current right so which means i should have another current source here again that should be an nmos transistor right now ideally if i exactly know what this current is i can put an appropriate current here bias it with a constant voltage and get it done with but of course unfortunately you can't have it so which means uh, the total current flowing here this is basically ix plus i, I load this cannot be equal to i not all the time you cannot ensure it if you bias it with a fixed voltage which means what should you do should make sure that this is not fixed voltage i should change it right and uh, we should change it so that the current ix changes to keep i not equal to ix plus i load so again now you can see if let us say i not is greater than this current what can you say about this voltage this increases so now if i not is greater than this to correct the uh, mis imbalance what should i do to ix i have to increase ix that means i have to increase vb so it means i already have this node that is increasing so this another way in which you can get the same effect right so again uh, if you are good engineer you will stop there basically you try to derive the circuit if you want to be a smarter engineer you try to see if you can do the same job in a different way see now you know the basic principle behind the circuit it seems to be doing two things one is reducing the output resistance other is the fact that it is keeping the bias current constant let's actually start with output resistance so here we derived at uh, derived the circuit let me copy this yeah so we arrived at the circuit by saying that uh, we want to provide an additional current here and we had a we gave a path for this additional current to flow down but i can also have a case where the current can be made to flow in the upper side let me erase this so let me have it here small signal wise we have this so you have let us say vt here so you already have small gm vt flowing i need to have a provision for a larger current to flow right so what i can do is I can put a pmos transistor right see other way to see is we are trying to make small signal output resistance larger you already did it using an nmos transistor with respect to small signals i can also use pmos transistor the small signal output resistance is going to be the same right so that is the other way in which you can look at it see here what i have done uh, from the source i have connected the drain so from the source i'll connect the drain of the pmos maybe i'll push it up hold on okay now source is grounded so here which means i'll connect it to vdd fine gate is connected to the drain right so oh i should have flipped it both are small same right so now to actually complete the full thing you have to put the bias current here bias current here you can apply the vt 
so this is some current i not this is some current i2 see now we have i mean you have two circuits again if you don't stop here right now we have two circuits with respect to small signal they are doing the same thing so if at all there is a difference where should it be in dc operating point or in large signal picture right again you can see in dc operating point uh, what is the minimum voltage you can have here at the output i mean at this point it is connected to the gate right if i mean it cannot be an overdrive if this is an overdrive voltage this transistor will not turn on you need to have one vgs for this right but if i didn't if i didn't make this connection in principle how much minimum i can go here I can go to two overdrive but here i can't do right so the point is here if i have a low smaller uh, voltage this guy will not conduct now you know do you know a transistor which conducts nicely for smaller voltage It's happening here. So that's happening here. So I mean, you can work out what's happening. And the other thing is, you can also look at large signal picture, right? See, just couple of minutes. Let's see if I can finish it. See here, uh, if I let us say RL is here, see if I keep increasing my input, now look at large signal picture. i keep increasing the input output will also try to increase right so if output tries to increase i am pushing current into rl or pulling current out of rl i am pushing current into this load and what is the maximum current i can push it what is the maximum current i can it's i not right but if you look at the other side let us say i want to reduce output which means i'll be sinking more and more current is there a limit on that current i mean basically i can sink in principle as large a current as possible because the gate voltage is not fixed right so here you have a limitation with respect to pushing i push is limited to i not so now you see with the pmos case Yeah, yeah, it's all non-linear. But the point is, like I told, sometimes you want to see what is the maximum you want to reach because as long as you have sufficient gain before it and put it in negative feedback, linearity is typically taken care of, right? It is non-linear definitely, but let us say it's non-linear also. Can I get anything out of it? So, right? So if I uh, do the same thing here, uh, if I keep, let us say the output voltage increases, which transistor will deliver current? I mean, which transistor will be pushing current into RL? The PMOS. So again, its gate is not fixed. Basically, it can deliver a large current. Whereas when you try to sink current, you are limited by that current source. So here you have limitations with respect to pulling. So essentially, uh, this is what is called class A. We saw a couple of classes black also. Class class. Anyways, so this is class A. Uh, again, that is basically where you have a limited bias current, which means you are uh, limited either while pushing or pulling current to or from the load. So if you want to do better, what can you do? You can combine both. So that is also sometimes done. I'll just show that and we'll wrap up. So which means you have to use both PMOS and NMOS. So I have an NMOS here. I'll go go and add PMOS in parallel. Same thing, but as we saw, we can't connect the same bias voltage to NMOS and PMOS. As we saw, this can be compatible for PMOS. So what you do is the following: you have you couple only the AC and the DC. You generate separately and feed it with the last resistor. Okay. So this is one way in which you can actually get a better and better understanding of the same circuit. Right? I mean, if you think about it, we basically started from an unknown circuit wherever it is right now if you are if you, typically most of them will just try to go and analyze it get something yeah this is what it's doing but i would say don't stop there you start with the first step you intuit what the circuit is doing 
and then go and analyze and then try to derive how you could have gotten the same circuit from scratch see now that is very good because the original designer he would not have obtained at the circuit in the same way in which you thought right but uh, you will get a different perspective which means you can get a different circuit also for example if you derived it from some other principle you can once you know what is the principle you can have 10 different circuits to make to make the same principle right so that way you can uh, arrive at a different circuit and whenever you come to a different new circuit what is the first thing you are supposed to do yeah good so this is called as i think this is flipped voltage follower this is called as uh, super source follower i mean if you had come up with this you could have given your name but unfortunately some huh oh sorry sorry <laughs> the pmos one is called flipped sorry sorry yeah this is called a super source follower okay. and this is called as class ab super source follower okay that's all let's stop here and we'll continue.